uh, talk over to Kristen, who was going to show us some pretty bird pictures from her trip that she took with Taya Thomas and Aaron Cooper down in Argentina. Was it last month? Uh, November. Oh, oh, all the way back in November, yep. excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, and how many weeks did you spend there? Well, like two and a half. I mean, I think it was almost three door to door, but we'll okay. travel time. But so enjoy, Kristen, and thank you very much for sharing your sure. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. It's a beautiful sunny evening. It's hard mm -hmm. to compete with, <laughs> with the good weather. Um, the super fancy mm -hmm. photography presentation from Argentina was last month with Milo. <laughs> I, have, I have pictures, but they're not Milo Bertram quality, so I just want to be sure that folks know that. Um, I did bring a couple of bird books. I'm happy to pass around if anybody wants to look stuff up. Um, this one is by one of the guides. Actually, maybe I'll just start. Okay. Uh, there's some things you might want to follow along with. Um, but that's by one of the guides that we went with, and he is a super duper photographer. So. Did you go specifically for birding? We did. We went down for birding. Yes. Yes. I mean, we did some other things, but it was almost a birding trip. So, yeah, so we went to. Uh, three main areas. Most of the birding was in the Esteros del Ibera and the Peninsula of Elvis. And then obviously we went through Buenos Aires because, because you kind of have to. That's the metropolis and we did. Okay. So I just thought it would be um, helped to get oriented. I know some folks have been to Argentina, but um, so we were mostly up here and then down. Uh, where did it go? <laughs> uh, Peninsula Valdez is down here. So we flew into Buenos Aires, went up north, flew up to Posadas, and um, the plan was to rent a car, but when we got there, they said they wouldn't rent to us. And they had satellite tracking units in the car, and there would be a $5,000 fine if we rode, if we drove down the road to Colonia, Carlos Pellegrini. So I was like, oh, this is the McCarthy Road of of uh, Argentina. Um, yeah, so we spent uh, five days up there and then flew back to Buenos Aires and went down to Peninsula about this. But um, I just thought this was interesting because you, know, you get to see the different um, habitat zones. Actually, I have the next slide. I can show that too. So, Kristen, how did you get up there if you didn't, couldn't run a car? Uh, we, within 20 minutes, there, a guy showed up at the airport and he's a driver, so he took his truck. Yeah, and we sloshed through the mud for five hours. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Um, but this is the biodiversity zone. I just thought it would be interesting to show. I think a lot of people, certainly there's the Andes, people are familiar with that, and Patagonia, this is all the arid stuff. Um, but we were up here in this huge wetlands complex, and it's an area that they call, they call it, they actually call it Mesopotamia. Uh, and Entre Rios, because it's between the two other biggest rivers in South America, the Paraná and the Uruguay. Um, and this up here, we did not make it up to Iguazu Falls, but that's a spectacular uh, waterfall complex up on the border with Brazil. I read that when Eleanor Roosevelt got to go see it in her lifetime, she said, oh, we're Niagara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, and just a couple of things that I found really interesting. I mean, we went for the birding, obviously, but we were learning about the country as we went, and they were having an election. You know, Millet got elected. He was the one who pledged to take them off the Argentine pesos and put it on the U.S. dollar. Oh. And we read, I read a little bit about that, and one article said, for heaven's sakes, the European Union is one of their biggest trading partners. They should go to the euro, not the dollar. Why would they do that? And, and we did see, um, all the cars were like Volkswagens and Fiat's and Renaults and I don't remember what else, but I was like, okay, all European cars. <clears throat> we did go to a big Estancia, a big sheep ranch at one point, and we didn't get to see the penguin colony there, but they were sheep shearing, and we said, oh, you know, where do you, where does this wool go? Because I had thought there's all this sheep farming, we can buy Argentinian yeah. clothes. Oh no, we can't afford that. It all goes to Europe to get processed. And then we birded in Puerto Medrin on the coast and we're driving around and there was this enormous wind farm. And I thought, wow, oh, they're really into renewable energy. Oh, well, uh, the Norwegians have built this wind farm for a big aluminum smelter that's right on the coast. And all the energy goes to aluminum smelting because it's super energy intensive. 
Um, so their economy isn't super developed. They basically are exporting a lot of raw materials and they don't have a ton of manufacturing capacity. Um, so the first part that we went to, like I said, was the, the wetlands and this is the locator map. This is the uh, Corrientes province in Argentina. You can see where it is in the country. Um, but this whole area is a network like the, that's the Uruguay River coming there and the Paraná coming on that side. Um, but it's all this enormous wetlands complex. And um, when, before we, so I guess I wanted to also point out, they initially created a, uh, a state provincial reserve in 1983 that was about 5,000 square miles. Then they created a provincial park. And then this uh, U.S. conservationist Douglas and Christine Tompkins, who were co-founders of the North Base and also involved with Patagonia, they started buying up parcels. And, uh, and in 2018, they turned over huge tracts of land to Argentina for, uh, to create a national park. Um, and part of the work they're doing is this rewilding where they're reintroducing ocelots and jaguars and tappers, tapirs, tappers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and giant otters, I think, is another one that they're that they're reintroducing. So, uh, doing stuff bit by bit. I think they just had a jaguar cub born in captivity that they're training, uh, so they can reintroduce it. Um, yeah, but anyway, that was just my way of introducing the area a little bit. So we went down. We we got to the airport in Posados. Um, we couldn't rent a car. Ruben El Alaman, Ruben the German, showed up. He's Uruguayan. But uh, with bright blue eyes and speaks and is, speaks Spanish, um, and gave us a ride. And that's kind of what he does. He's he does um, I don't know guide is the right word, but he he's a driver. He transports folks, and he drove us down this dirt road that, like I said, it took the better part of five hours because it was so muddy. And half a dozen times, I was sure we were going to end up in the ditch. Um, but we passed some great sights along the way. He was this terrific guy. He knew all the birds. He would stop and show us all kinds of things, and he told us all kinds of stories. And so, anyway, it was um, it was really enjoyable. It would have been a lot duller if it was just the three of us and we were not learning uh, learning as we go. So this was a guy that you just like faded. Got the a uh, rental you... car company called him. Yeah, but it wasn't something that you. Had we have not set it up. No, yeah, I mean it's like I was thinking, okay, international travel, you know how to. Um, Make decisions on the fly, and this is you know what do you do when your plan doesn't when you don't go things don't go to plan. But luck though that you've got a, a guy who's a birder. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean he's not um, trained as a birder, but he's just learned a lot, and he's and he's just super enthusiastic about sharing stuff. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, it was great. Um, there we go. Okay. Oh, and there's Ruben. That's Ruben on the left. So um, Taya and Aaron, and that's in front of our little posada. Um, Rancho Ibarra, I think it was called. And um, Colonia Carlos Pellegrini is this tiny little town, population 800, 880, I think. And they, it's been around for a long, I mean, many, many decades, but um, they just started investing in ecotourism and they consciously adapted some zoning. Like you can only have one story buildings, you can have a posada, but if you can't have more than 10 rooms, you can't have more than three beds in one room. Uh, land parcels are limited to 60 by 60 meters. And I think part of it I was reading, they have seen what's happened up by Iguazu Falls and said, oh my goodness, no, we don't want that. So they really put these policies in place so they could keep the tourism in this to match the scale of their small community. <clears throat> and so this is one of the main gates to the wetlands of that town. Um, and so, yeah, we, as part of our uh, the stay at our Posada, we had a guide who, every day we got a guided trip, and this was the first day we went out, um, and there are caimans everywhere, and this is on the Laguna, and the whole Laguna is basically, has these floating vegetation mats, and if the wind blows, the island moves, and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And at one point, we were looking at something, and I was like, what is that? What kind of bird is that? And I realized, oh, I was looking and a caiman with its mouth open because they just sit there and respirate or ventilate or whatever. That's how they cool themselves. And I was looking straight in the mouth from a distance. I was like, oh, that's not a bird. That's a, that's a caiman. But that's what they do. <clears throat> Let's 
So, and this was our guide, Max, Maximilian, Maxi. Um, and he just, yeah, drove us around and he was pretty, pretty knowledgeable and could point out lots of birds. I didn't get tons of, I didn't get very many pictures of all the birds we saw, but we saw all three kingfishers, the great kingfisher, the Amazonian kingfisher, and the green kingfisher. We saw mojitas, um, all kinds of stuff. We saw the southern screamer, and I don't know if it's, if you can make it out, but it has red eyes and this collar, and it has a really funny call, and that's why they call it a screamer, a screamer duck. Mm -hmm. And this one I put in, I know the quality is not very good, but you can just see on these vegetation mats how there's all kinds of stuff hanging out together. The capybara, the screamer duck, the caimans. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is pretty wild and rich. So we, we went up the river, the Rio Rosarca, the Rio Paraná, um, where our son was born up the river. And the funny thing is like 300, 400 miles down from, from where you were, if there was a really high water, that these vegetation floats would come down and then in like a, yeah, you would have those Just islands floating down and then you got on that and they float into a, like Rosario, which is like 2 million people or something, mm -hmm. a town. And yeah, suddenly you would have the Cayman and like, well, I, I know that they ask for, but when they close to the swimming pool, oh, no. you got the big, uh, big snakes, would you like, there would be a bore or something. And it's, yeah, it's incredible how mm -hmm. this moves. It's, it's like, yeah, that's cool. And what we were a little bit nervous because we'd been hearing that they had a drought and they did in fact have a drought for about three years before we got there. There were big fires in 2022, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and typically the whole Laguna is like three to four meters deep and it's just enormous. But during this drought, they said it was one meter deep. And so I think the whole thing must have just contracted. I mean, it's, it's been had to be devastating. Rain. Yeah. And so um, there was plenty of rain when we got there. So it filled up again, which was really nice. Um, the capybaras are super cute. Can't resist little furry mammals that, you know, are wandering. And they're everywhere. You know, the, first, the first one we saw, we were like, stop the car. And then we realized they're all over the place. But you still take a lot of pictures. And yeah. So Mama capybara was keeping an eye on us. So is that a road? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. They are, yeah, yeah, they're kind of like a beaver, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we did a uh, one day tour on the uh, on the Laguna itself, and then we went up um, a, um, one of the inlet rivers. Um, there were just hundreds of egrets, snowy egrets great egrets all over and I, I couldn't get a good picture but the guy kept saying oh there's a harrier there's a harrier and we were like okay they don't look like our harriers but you call them a harrier and you live here and so but then we realized they were snail kites Tay was looking at the book later and they're snail kites which are kind of like slaty gray um a more uniform gray um and I and there were dozens of them uh, all along this channel so many 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 do those egrets migrate? I don't know if they migrate very far. I think they congregate for the nesting season. Okay. Yeah. I visited my cousin in South Carolina a couple of years ago, and she showed me this tree where dozens of egrets were roosting, and the alligators were in the water okay. down below because they were like, Ooh, a juicy morsel might fall out of the nest. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. That's this was the so this was the opposite season so just the spring mm -hmm. beginning of spring. So yeah, um, and then we went to. So that was on the Laguna itself. Um, third day, I think we went to the national park, and just right inside the gate. And this was a day with a guide, and he was terrific. And so we go right inside the gate, and boom, there's the strange-tailed tyrant, which is a really emblematic. Bird. It's the one that's on the cover here of this Birds in Argentina book, which I maybe want to pass it around. But um, it was so cool to watch. So it's the female. Uh, the male has a slightly bigger tail, but they use it. They they cling on the um, on this tall grass, and the tail's like a rudder. I mean, you can see them sort of mm -hmm. using it to steady themselves or change the angle. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> wildlife is everywhere. 
The hornero is the national bird, and they're everywhere too, and that's their nest. They make this waddle. Oh, that's not termites. Don't know. That's the that's the that's the hornero nest. So pretty pretty common. Hey, go that way to the bathroom. Right. Um, this is not the greatest image, but it is a vermilion flycatcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I should say most of these pictures are not mine. This one, I'm sure, was Aaron's. Um, Aaron and Taya took a lot of pictures, and they're. Uh, yeah, this was um, on the road on the way down to uh, Colonia and Carlos Pellegrini. We stopped at a little school. So when you're driving down there, you're driving through ranch land, which is why we saw the gauchos. Um, and. And it was about halfway, so we stopped so we could use the bathroom. And uh, I think it's, yeah, it's where the kids from the ranches, uh, all the kids will come for the week and go to school and then go back home on the weekend. And there was a, one family there and a couple of kids, so we stopped and talked to them for a little bit. Yeah, that was neat. This is, um, I think, a tropical kingbird. I can't remember. I was, saw a lot. Um, but anyway. <laughs> a lot of uh, variations on this theme, working up to like starting with this size and then getting up to the great Piscadee. And they all have yellow, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. Um, this is the saffron finch, which is a. <coughs> not super rare. Um, that might be endemic to Argentina. I'm not for sure. Uh, yeah, it just got that little bitty orange crown, and yeah, that was neat to see. Um, also got to see. So one day we went to. Well, well this was the, the with the same guide uh, with whom we saw the strange tail tyrant, but we got to go to another wetland complex, and there were huge. Huge flocks of ibis, bare-faced ibis oh, and white-faced ibis, oh, okay. enormous flocks, and uh, lots and lots of swallows, different kinds of swallows. But this is the black-bellied whistling duck that perched ever so nicely for us right at the top of a snag. <laughs> yeah, so that's really cool. So that was Ibera, and then we went to um, the Peninsula of Valdez, and so the communities. Um, Puerto Madryn is down here. Uh, Puerto Pyramides, Pyramides is right there. And San Antonio Puente is up here. So we spent about a week in this area. Um, we did a day of guiding. We did a day where we just uh, drove ourselves. We had a rental car and drove around the peninsula. Um, and then the, uh, to, when we went up to San Antonio Oeste and Los Grutas, we met up with Mirta Carabal. I don't know. If She's a friend of Aaron's from the uh, all of Aaron's work with um, Crimby and you know, that moon, the moon. networks down there. Yeah, so that was really neat to get the bird. Yeah, she's, she's a great person to travel with down there. Huh? She's got the yeah, she's, she's got, got the connections. Yes, <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, and this area in here is known for uh, the southern being a southern breeding ground, a breeding ground for southern right whales. There's a lot of oh. um, and there's a lot of whale watching in that little in that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and we could see whales just from the shore. I mean, we didn't actually ever end up going out whale watching. Um, it didn't work out timing wise, but I remember saying something to Tay about whale watching. She, she goes, oh, I see whales all the time. And I was like, well, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they're southern right whales, no? What's that? They're southern right whales. Yes. Come back so. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll see some pictures of the sea lion colonies that were on this shore and also a penguin colony. But you didn't see the orcas. Hunting. We did not see any orcas coming on the beach. Yeah. Yeah, that's what um, this area is also known for when the seals are pupping and have seals on the beach, the orcas are doing their stealth hunting. Although I think, how does a giant animal, it's not really stealth hunting because you can see them coming, but somehow they, somehow they're quiet, they're successful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can answer that question. I'll try to do it briefly. Um, it's really interesting. Different types of orcas have 
come back to different hunting strategies in different parts of the world. And in this type of scenario, am I correct? You've got long, sandy beaches, yes. <laughs> right? So the whales like will come up along the beach, and they see a pup not paying attention, and he's close to the water, and they'll actually wave them oh. right out. They'll use the water, they'll rush rush the beach and create a, a wave of water or actually grab it mm -hmm. and wash it and wash it in. And then they, they'll whistle themselves back into the water. It's pretty amazing. They'll beach themselves. Well, we'll figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just to show that, um, so this is in Puerto Madryn and uh, yes, Southern Right Whales. That's the, is what the area is known for. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of whale art. There's a whale sculpture. There's obviously murals. So yeah, it's very, uh, part of their identity in that community. Just and some um, turns. Royal turns, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the royal turns there. We did see at the Bahia Bustamante when we went further south, we did see um, snowy capped, is that what they're called? Snowy. I think that's what it is, southern cat terms and uh, southern South American terms. So there's, yeah, a lot of diversity. And this is up in Las Grutas, um, which means the caves, and we'll see why in a little bit. But again, uh, there, we, we met up with Mirta Caraval, who's um, Aaron's friend, and Mirta's friend, Carolina, who teaches art um, in the grade schools, and she and her students painted this mural. So it was really fun. It's like two blocks long. And like has other segments of it, but it was kind of neat to, um, I think just because we have the Shorebird Festival here, I think I felt like, oh, these are our people, you know? <laughs> this is, and that's a big part of the work I think that Erin is doing through the Forest Service is trying to support um, other conservationists and other bird advocacy groups in South America on the communities along the flyway so that they can also be protecting um, this habitat, because what we're learning is there, you know, there's critical stops uh, for for foraging, and and I think they're also learning a lot more about um, habitat types and what birds need at those different life stages at those habitats uh, at those stopover sites. So um, yeah, so Aaron and Crimby, and there's another guy, not wizard. There's another. Um, Name, but they've done a ton of work to try to nurture and cultivate and support these local uh, conservation efforts and bird festivals in South American communities to help preserve habitat. Yeah, so that's another part of the mural. It's pretty fun. And this is one of the beaches. This is Los Frutas. Um, I don't know that there's, I don't think there was a seal colony in this area, but I just, it's a beautiful, beautiful beach. And this is part of that. Um, the north part of the uh, Gulf of San Matias, the, the, uh, to the north of the peninsula that I showed the map of. And they have a lot of um, burrowing parakeets who are chattering away all day long <laughs> yeah, um, in the brush. And this is their burrow. So these are the cliffs on the beach, and the town is named Las Grutas, which is the cave. Um, yeah, it was really cool. So they actually, yeah, they're, that's their home. And so this was. Uh, in the early in the morning, I think I think it's one of Taya's pictures, but um, yeah, they're kind of just getting going, coming out of the burrow, and then they go take their bath. You know, they, this is the drainage coming down the street, going down into the into the beach, and they're all just in there, chattering and drinking and bathing. And, yeah, it's really cute to see, kind of part of their daily routine. And this was us uh, over, and there's a big channel behind us. You can see those are big fishing boats. And this was, I don't know, 9 in the morning, maybe 9.30 or 10. And I think we went back later that afternoon, and all of those boats were floating. Like, the whole tide came in and filled up that channel. So, um, yeah, just some of the artwork. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's Mirta on the left, Taya and Aaron and myself. And just what we were seeing in the channel, you know, a Brazilian shorebirds, which is, like I said, there are people similar to what we see here when we at the Shorebird Festival. And this uh, I took of Mirta because she's involved with this group. They're proposing a uh, pipeline from interior uh, in the 
further inland to come to the coast in the Gulf. And she's working with a group saying, let's not, <laughs> let's not spoil the whale habitat and, and, uh, and introduce these potential contaminants. So this is just a map. I just thought it was interesting um, showing where the proposed pipeline would go and where it would come to where they want to build an oil terminal in the Gulf of San Mateus. That's an oil pipeline? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm proposed. Proposed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the terminal is under construction, so I don't know what's happening with this now. And this is Puerto Pyramides, Pyramides uh, the little town. It's kind of like, has anybody seen Doc Martin? Does anybody watch yeah. that show on PBS? Um, this is sort of like the Latin America Doc, Doc Martin town, I feel like. You know, it's just um, seaside. There's the whole town kind of built around the one shingle of beach where all the whale watching boats go out, and I'm sure there used to be fishing boats. Maybe there still are some fishing boats. Um, and we did see a lot of times these um, protest signs that say no to mega mining. Um, and I don't know if that's the same thing as the oil development, or if that's, I think there's a different mine being proposed that they're protesting. Mm -hmm. So, and, Guanacos, lots and lots of guanacos. I'm sorry that the picture is not great quality, um, but they were everywhere on the side of the road, and you did have to slow down. And uh, yeah, you think that they would dart across the road, but no, they see you coming and they kind of slow down. Okay. But yeah, they were everywhere. I don't. I know people eat them. We never. It, we didn't end up. It wasn't ever uh, offered to us, but it's pretty common. Yeah, but they're neat looking animals. And this is what you were talking about, Kate. This is the coastline of the peninsula of Valdez. So yeah, and these are some seals hanging out there. These, it just was really interesting, these um, rock striations. I don't know if that's from glaciation, I would guess. Um, but it was interesting because this is about what it looked like when we got there. And I remember turning around at one point and within, I would say 15 minutes, it got, the tide came in and it was all covered up. So, yeah, it's super shallow for a long way out, and the tide comes in. And, and windy. What's that? And windy. Yes, yeah, very windy. Yeah, yeah that's a little bit uh, closer look at some of the fur seals hanging out and resting. And they would, um, I had a video, but it's kind of hard to see, but they, they just lie there, and then every once in a while, they'll kind of flick some gravel upon them to cool off a little bit, I think is what they're doing. They you know, dig in the gravel a little bit and then fling it on themselves. And, it wasn't super hot that day, but it was windy and we, yeah, we were all bundled up. So this was, we were bound and determined to see penguins. And uh, I think that this might actually be a penguin. It was pretty funny because I think Aaron took this picture, but we got out of the parking lot and it's pretty empty looking and sandy and bare. And so we get off the spotting scope and this is the wire right here. We're limited to where we can go. We're not supposed to go outside of the little parking area. Um, and I think Taya spotted a penguin. She was just dying to see a penguin. This was like later in the day. She was like, we do this whole trip and I don't see a penguin here. I'm going to be so disappointed. Um, so we get out of the car, get out the spine scope. And, uh, and she's looking, looking, looking. And Aaron goes, come here, Christian, come here. And we come around and there's the penguin right below us <laughs> before she even got to see it. So, but, but we did see, we did not see oh, the penguins. Yeah. So there's one coming out of its burrow and. And that's, I was really struck by this like rough, sandy soil. I always think of penguins as, you know, sleek, swimming birds hopping up on the ice, and here they are kind of, I don't know, it seems like it would be rough. Magellanic, I'm sorry, Magellanic penguins, yes, yeah. And I was also struck by when I, when I did get to see one in the water, I was like, wow, it looks like a big myrrh. You know, the water shape, the way it swims oh, in the water. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so these are... Magellanic penguins, that one's uh, really up close. They are it's kind of yeah, interesting <laughs> face. <laughs> and this uh, was might be kind of hard to see, but so like I said, we were told to stay in this enclosure. And I remember seeing this um, opening and saying, like, oh wow, there's a burrow, you know. But I'm sure it doesn't get used anymore because it's right in the parking lot. And that's going to disturb. A penguin. Um, 
So what was the temperature? Um, I guess low 60s, 50s. I, yeah, I mean, it was, I think I had on a skirt that day, but it was just windy. You know, you wanted to, yeah. like a windbreaker. And, yeah. Anyway, I thought it was cute just how they do that little. So they were about two feet tall. Mm -hmm. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so this was another, th this was the day we went um, birding with the guy who did this uh, Aves of Puerto Madrid book, um, a really phenomenal birder, and he he asked us what we did, and I said, oh, she's a wildlife biologist, and she's a commercial fisherman, and he said, well, I'm, I'm not a biologist, and it was kind of almost apologetic, um, but he was incredibly knowledgeable. He said, I read all the papers, and he said, I've documented, you know, I've documented the first time this bird was here, I've documented the first nesting instance of such and such a bird, and, and at the end of the trip, when we, at the end of our day with him, and we said, um, where do your clients come from? He said, oh, Texas, and so Taya said, oh, the U.S., and he goes, Texas, you know, so a lot of birders from Texas, but he also had spent a couple days last summer guiding Christian Cooper, who was the black birder from Central Park, who got accosted by the woman who, who wouldn't keep her dog on a leash, and has since, because he got, there was so much publicity from that, he's now like a National Geographic ambassador. Anyway, this guy was guiding him for a couple days, and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's big. Uh, so this is a southern lap wing, and we happen to see a little chick. Yeah. 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 Picture quality is not the best, but it's uh, oh, but super it's good. It's like a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's really neat. That was cool to see. Um, definitely camouflaged, you know, and then all that scrubby stuff they they blend. Yeah, that was cool. Got to watch that for a little bit. So this is uh, the guy that taken us down to the lagoon, and um, I think because we've been on the coast so much, he said, "Well, let's go do, let's go birding in the brush." So we saw. Um, a carbonated finch and a carbonated finch. Carbonated finch. Is it so it's like, on <laughs> Pardon? I don't. I was like, uh, I don't know why. I just thought that was. I don't know if that's if that was part of the translation to English. I thought they ended up with that, but yeah, it was a really interesting name. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but we also saw a lot of the flamingos. So many flamingos, which is really cool. And then you can see there are uh, lots of ducks too in the lagoon. Um, yeah, but the flamingos were really cool, and it was they were so uh, orangey. I just was really struck by the color. Um, I think this was a sewage lagoon, so some uh, additional excess nutrients in there, but but it made them pretty happy. So yeah. So lots of flamingos. Um, and then this is, yeah, this is the white faced ibis, um, which is, they're just so iridescent that their plumage is really remarkable. Um, is that from what they eat? Like the flamingos? Or no, the yeah. Flamingos, yes, I think it is from eating krill. And, oh, uh, no, the, I, no, I don't, I think that's just how they evolved. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Interesting mm -hmm. yeah. It's psychedelic. It is psychedelic. <laughs> really trippy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So this was, um, if I remember right, this is when we were birding kind of toward the end of the day. This was just like a little, uh, a small pond in the city, in uh, in a public park in Puerto Madryn that he took us to. But it's pretty popular. Um, Brown-headed gull and some other shorebirds, but this guy. Uh, even though it's not as crisp as it could be, but that was kind of neat to see. That was a new one. He looks funny. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, and we got to see a stilt along with the ibis. 
There were several of those. That was cool. Um, so more assemblages of uh, different kinds of shorebirds. I think some of these are yellow legs. Better yellow legs, probably pectoral center. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, I was definitely the weakest link in the birding. I'm enthusiastic, but I'm not as knowledgeable as as Aaron and Taya. Um, and uh, oh, Costco Roba, is that how you say it? Costco Roba swan. There's some of those in that same wetlands. Um, and then this one I put in because it is what I wanted to see, a pectoral sandpiper. They, at the beginning of the day, the guy said, is there anything you guys want to see? And we found, and this is his picture. This is from the Dow. Yeah, which is why it's yes, yeah, he's well, but yeah, it's, um, interesting. Just they've got that really clean uh, break between the bar and young chest and the white belly and the two tone bill. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So those are the marks. Yeah, but oh my gosh, when you're just confronted with a, a whole riverbank full of shorebirds, it's like yikes! How do we? How do we separate the signal, or I was gonna say the signal from the noise, tell them apart. But. So then when we went, then we went further south um, to an area called Bahia Bustamante. I don't have a ton of pictures from this, but um, this was an old seaweed processing plant. They had tried for years to process seaweed, and they did. They ran it for, I don't know, 40 or 50 years, I want to say. Um, but eventually it sort of went out of business, and they've converted this whole complex into an ecotourism lodge. And so they've got um, some of their displays. This is a sea lion skeleton uh, in the old in the old seaweed processing warehouse. Yeah, and they've got a bunch of other. There's some other, lots of other bird skeletons and other mammals hanging in the warehouse. Um, so we went on a boat trip one afternoon, and this is I don't know if you can make it out. An enormous male covering a much smaller female, and I actually had a video that I couldn't find, but um, I was like, "Oh, that's so intimate." Because we were really going at it, making a lot of noise. Um, this was a cool place. We did get to go to a penguin colony uh, on this trip, and um, and that was more Magellanic penguins, and they're in their little burrows. This it was on a little outcrop right by the water, and lots of little like weathered, uh, I don't know if they were junipers, I can't, I don't, I don't remember the evergreens, almost like little bonsai trees because they're so exposed and so wind scoured. Um, but their burrows were right in there and you would just tiptoe around in between the brush and the penguins would peek out at you. And you know, as long as we were trying to stay five feet away, but sometimes we ended up not being five feet away. And as long as you kind of, yeah, didn't disturb them, they didn't seem to be, they were pretty uh, accustomed, I think, to seeing people walking around. So, yeah, so that's another one that we got pretty close to, yeah. Um, so that was the Gia Bustamante. We, I, I don't, oh wait, I added, maybe yeah, I didn't. We did see um, the Shabu steamer duck, and I think Taya said she saw a red knot. Um, I think it's one of the only places in, Latin, it's one of the main stopovers for red knots. Yeah. Um, and the red knots, what is it about their population, Kate? There's some, they, there are some that come through here, but they... The ones that come through here go up to the known area, for instance, and nest in the alpine. The ones down there, they, they're coming all the way from south. From but there's another... Yeah, they could be coming from Argentina. Yeah. Right. And then there's another population on the east coast. Yeah. yeah, there's five substitutions. Okay. Yeah, so that was Bahia Bustamante. And then we made our way back to um, Buenos Aires. And that's the, so yes, all of a sudden back in the city, uh, Buenos Aires Opera House, which is just gorgeous and has lots of really pretty iron grill work and um, just fabulous Great. European architecture. You can see the influence. And we did get to go to see uh, a performance. We went to see Madame Butterfly, so we got to go oh, Yeah, yeah, that was really yeah. neat. Mm -hmm. How's the acoustics in there? Fabulous. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a real opera house with like all the tiered oh, really? boxes and yeah, five, five 
stories up, it seemed like. Yeah, that was really incredible. Uh, and then we also did some other extracurricular stuff. Also, into a soccer game. It was nuts. <laughs> it was just people. The spirits of our block office up in the buses and to get people to the game. Oh, um, so, I think that was so this is inside the stadium. Oh, my. <laughs> so this wasn't Boca? Pardon? This wasn't Boca? No, this is um, the other team. Yeah, no, we couldn't get tickets to the Boca game, so we went to the next level. Yeah. Um, and I guess, they, so their, their team colors are red. Surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah. And they don't let in fans from the opposing teams because it's too rowdy. Um, they get oh, oh my God. Too yeah, yeah. Um, and huh. we also yeah, so that was that was pretty fun. I just started doing that. So did you wear <laughs> so you just wore a red shirt to go in? And, and like well, um, I don't know that we actually wore any red, but everybody else did. So we this was with a guy too. Like uh, there's a company that um uh helps that buys the tickets for you when you meet up with a group and have pizza and beer beforehand and then they put you on a van and they drive to the stadium and then you walk a few blocks to get to the stadium i think we went through five checkpoints oh wow in there to, yeah. oh so it can't bring anything in right yeah. right yeah uh, oops i meant to keep going um so we did a day trip to tigre which is uh, a city on the rio de la plata which is um where the rivers that Ollie was talking about drain out into the Atlantic. And it's just this enormous expanse. Um, Taya and I did a walk through a park one day on the edge of Buenos Aires. And, uh, and you could see channel markers, like as far as you could see to the horizon, because it's so shallow and so vast. It just goes and goes and goes. Um, but this town is kind of like a Latin American Venice. Um, mm -hmm. It's all water travel. There's Obviously, there's some stuff on land, but you know, there's uh, water taxis and boat tours, and there are um, water taxis that take people to their homes because they're all living up these river channels. I was like, wow, we think we're remote. These folks are, it's way up there. So this is what it looks like on one of these channels. Everybody has a dock to get to their home, and they tie up their boat, and I... The water was pretty high. Realized, yeah. What um, was the bug level like? Uh, like pardon? The the insects. Like uh, mosquitoes. Uh, were, were there a lot of mosquitoes? <laughs> yeah, we the boat we were on was moving. I don't remember oh, yeah. being was annoyed was by was, bugs, but it was early in the season. Yeah, right. And it was early. It was too early. Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, it just looks like it. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. You can think it goes to Yeah, perfect. Okay. That's Which right. is probably really good for birds. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um I was thinking at one point I was like, I can't imagine there's a sewage system out here. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so that is the sewage. But yeah, yeah. Lots of circulation. For like yeah. Um, and this is the barge that's bringing in some heavy equipment to do some construction, and then there were a bunch of uh, construction supplies on the on that. Large too. I think I saw a door and a stack of windows, but um, yeah, that's how they do it, just like we do. Fun. Um, and when we were in Argentina, people love, love, love their dogs. So this was some street art that I took a picture of just because it was so cute. Um, and then this is oh, that's a dog walker. <laughs> oh, you know, right? Where's the visual? Sorry, it's supposed to be. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> okay. Didn't work. That's too bad. Anyway, we saw lots of people with um, a dozen dogs on a leash, and they're just cruising down the street. And they've got a belt with all different carabiners, and all the dogs are attached. And were they picking up the food? The dogs yes. Food? Yeah. Yeah. They were. They were. Wow. And this is our bird list. This is what we saw. So I thought I would just. Oh wow. Put that mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. For. Um, oh, my, my, my. Happy to share that if anybody wants. So you did see that's only good, which those mm -hmm. some of those go to like a Beluga River to get one. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, I wondered if you, you didn't see an Eskimo curlew. We did not. Huh? Nope. They're uh, they're mentioned in the bird book, but they say possibly extinct. Mm. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, and the one that, um, the guy who took us birding in the brush, brushy, scrubby stuff because we've been on the coast already. We, I meant to say, I didn't have a good picture of it. I was really disappointed, but there's a great picture in his book. We did get to see a Magellanic horned owl and he was telling us, so we, we went up to this bluff above the ocean for lunch and, um, and he said, yeah, we can do a short walk. And we did, we walked down the track a little bit and kind of got to the edge of this little ravine and there was a niche um, in the wall of this little ravine and there's the Magellanic horned owl just hunkered mm -hmm. down, eyes at half mast, taking a siesta in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. um, big bright yellow eyes. And then we walked around the corner and there was the mate on the other side. Yeah. And when we, when we, I guess, I don't know if we got too close or just that we happened to see the other one, then the first one sort of opened one eye all the way, you know, and was watching us. <laughs> um, but that was really cool to see that. And I think the thing that really impressed me was that the guide had said um, that he had scouted, like he'd used Google Earth to look at the elevations and talk about the habitat and or to, to, to look at the habitat types. And he scouted out and found this owl where it was hanging out, just based on, you know, mm -hmm. here's where I think they would be, and here's what the elevations are, and here's blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he did a ton of work to um, scout out where he finds certain birds and take his clients to, and that was really awesome. Yeah. Birds are dead. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I'm happy to share this if you want some email. No. Right. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Your name's just caught me up. Roadside hawk. I know. <laughs> right, like the black you know which oyster caster. <laughs> Not a black oyster caster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.